I'm going to tell everybody, first of all, uh, that I'm overwhelmed uh, to be here this afternoon. I'm overwhelmed to, to be interviewed by Charlie Jacoby, and I have to tell you that I'm so impressed by the Field Sports Channel that only today I have become a shareholder. No, you're right, he has. And, and I paid him a tenner. <laughs> and He's if any of you want to be a shareholder of the Field Sports Channel, minimum payment, £10, up, up to and he'll high. take it. No, th I was worried where that was going. Thank you very much, Robin, for that, <laughs> that ringing endorsement. Yes. Robin's now my boss. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to pull any punches. Robin, tell us about the Countryside Restoration Trust, first of all. The, the Countryside Restoration Trust, um, it was and is uh, the first uh, charity started in Britain uh, linked to uh, wildlife-friendly farming. Uh, we started in 1993, and we started before anybody else called Packham, called the RSBB, called any of those uh, seemed to be interested in it. And it was started because a group of friends, uh, including uh, Gordon Benningfield, uh, the wonderful countryside artist from Hertfordshire, and Lawrence van der Post, uh, and various other people, uh, we were worried at the loss of farmland birds, because if you think of the number of acres of uh, nature reserve uh, or wildlife reserve, then the acreage of farmland far exceeds that. And we were seeing farmland wildlife disappearing. Uh, we were seeing skylarks going, orchids going, and after the, the hard winter of 62, 63, um, I, I hope some of you can remember that. Only people tell me I'm getting very old now. Uh, and so I, I can see a lot of you are very young. Uh, and you might not have remembered 62, 63, because it meant that animals and birds uh, that had DDT in their blood systems and in their bodies, they then had a period of very, very cold weather. They couldn't face it and they died. And uh, a lot of our wildlife disappeared. Barn owls, kestrels, um, the hare, um, orchids, otters, a lot of things just vanished. And then over the years, we thought, how can we bring this back? How can we hear Skylark sing again? And Gordon Benningfield and I, we went to the RSPB and we said to them, shouldn't you be doing something with farmland? Shouldn't you buy farmland? And instead of telling farmers what to do, show farmers what to do. And uh, uh, they said, uh, the director at the time was a chap called Ian Prest, and he said, the future is nature reserves. And so quite simply, we went back and said, well, we don't want the RSPB's future. The whole of the countryside is precious. Why do we want a few special areas? We want the whole place to be special. Uh, and so we started the Countryside Restoration Trust. But there is an important man in all this. There was a Secretary of State um, for Agriculture, I think, in those days, called John Gummer. If you remember, John Seldom Glummer, we used to call him. Uh, and he came to the farm at my invitation one day and I said, look, we're very worried. We've got this beautiful field. It was full of rough grass, wildflowers, big hedge. And I said, we're going to plough it up 
completely and we're ripping the hedge out. And, and he said, why? It's beautiful. So I said, well, the other side of the hedge, there is a field of wheat and you pay us uh, to grow wheat and all our arable land you give us a subsidy for. In my opinion, this little field is far more important. It's far more important to wildlife and you give us nothing. And uh, I hope that suddenly the idea of stewardship went into his head and he actually developed stewardship because we'd also got a field that the ministry called a hay meadow uh, with six different bit grasses in it. But we'd all also got another one that we'd done ourselves by talking to the great Miriam Rothschild and that had got 70 species of grasses and wildflowers in it. And we took him to the DEFRA one and said, what do you think of that? And he said, well, not a lot. And we took him to the other one, which was just stunning. And so I hope even at that time, when we were just starting up, we were influencing a politician. I would like to have influenced Mr. Gummer, but he wouldn't come and see me. Mr. I Gummer, don't know Mr. why. Mr. Mr. Gove, Mr. New. Oh, no, yes, yeah, sorry, Gove. So you Mr. Go, you saw Mr. Gummer in that light saw bulb Mr. moment. I saw Mr. Gummer, but Mr. Gove wouldn't come and see me. He was too busy doing his impersonation of Mr. Bean, and now we've got um, we've got Teresa Villiers, a Londoner, obviously cut out to look after the countryside. And uh, we just have to wait and see what happens now. Roll with that punch. Now, are you, are you terribly flattered uh, that I know that some of your biggest fans, people like Chris Packham and Mark Avery, have, have taken your idea of, of, uh, of top-down uh, government directive on how we should manage our land, and, they, and they've come up with this, this, this new version of what you might call RSBB socialism, where they're now going to impose on us how to manage our land. Is, it, is, is, that, is that what you were aiming at originally? Uh, certainly not. Uh, we want to give farmers and landowners opportunities and we want them to be rewarded for what they do. And so if you want to be a commercial farmer and you don't want wildlife, fine. That's fine by me as long as you don't get any subsidy. And so people who are doing good things for wildlife, people who are encouraging the wildlife to come back, and people who are looking after their land and their landscape, then I do think they should um, get the reward, they should get the money, uh, and you work hard to get it. I mean, look at the state of me. <laughs> this is what 26 years of working hard for wildlife has done. He's only 45 years old, it's amazing. Do you know, I will tell you a story, but, um, uh, while uh, at the end of this, uh, I do have a new book out. It's a new old book out. It's The Decline of an English Village, the 45th um, anniversary edition. And we have the publisher sitting in here. Uh, so I've got to be extraordinarily polite. <laughs> and and uh, the, the book has two new chapters in it to show the perils of the, what is going on in the countryside. And uh, I had some delivered to my house early one morning and it was printed in Czechoslovakia and a little Czechoslovakian came over with a lorry full of books, motorbikes, um, ladders, you all sorts of stuff. Part of a consignment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, and then I said, come on then, let me help you unload the books. And he said, no, no, I do it. And I said, oh, but I want to help you. He said, oh, no, you are very old. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and I thought, what a nice man. Well, well, well done, Robin. Wise of you not to attempt the accent, I must say. The book is available uh, for 18.95 after uh, we've spoken to Robin. If you want to, he'll be over there, and he will even sign copies, which will wipe the face value off it immediately. If, if you can and get hold of an unsigned copy, it could be, could be worth something. Yeah, and sometimes I can do joined-up writing, <laughs> which is even better. But on the subject of the decline of the English village, I mean, you, met, you seem to be doing two things. You're, you're, you're trying to bring us a very, very modern view of what the countryside should be like with wildlife conservation at its heart. But at the same time, you're kind of harking back to the, lo the lovely old days of yesteryear. And nothing wrong with that. Are you, the, you, the, are, are, you hark back to, to um, countryside films, how they used to be made. And now you're copying them. Nonsense. We're, we're, we're driving a Ford a new agenda. And are you? <laughs> really? Well, we're driving well, a Ford can I have my ten quid back? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I... There is a lot wrong. Um, you know, our population is too high. Um, certain politicians uh, allowed uh, thousands and millions of people into the country under Which Europe's benefited free farmers under because they free movement because they picked lots of crops and, and fruit and, and in my opinion it is a subject that nobody will talk about hardly no. anybody will talk about he will he, the, he, he the never problem stops. one of the major problems is that uh, the united nations uh, has said at the year 2000 that our population would be 60 million in 2025. It is already 66 million, 68 million. We're having to build thousands and thousands of houses on some of the best farmland, on some of the best greenbelt land. We are making huge uh, new villages, uh, new towns on, on uh, areas Villages used to come from history and economics and geography. It is now new, new estates are being put in the countryside because the government said, you have got to have a development plan, you have got to have a new town, you have got to have a new village, and you're seeing the countryside disappearing before our eyes. We, we are where you are in Cambridgeshire. Have, uh, is any of this taking place very near you? Very near. I, I, it's, it's taking place all over the country, no, we'll say except give, obviously in your part of no, Somerset. No, I'm, I'm t entirely with you, with you on this one. Obviously, we, we have more shotguns than you. We don't seem to have so much of a problem. But uh, where you are in Cambridgeshire, do you, do you have, have you seen sp specific impacts on, for example, uh, water supply and, and uh, and wildlife. Our, our water supply is going to be extremely serious. Uh, we're going to see large areas without hares. Uh, I'm worried that the barn owls that we got back, uh, they're going to have their hunting land uh, restricted. And we've really got to fight against the planners. We've got to fight against the insanity that is actually taking over the countryside. Uh, and the countryside has not got much of a voice anymore and country people are not consulted if if you've got a planning um a, a problem in your area and you have a consultation are you listened to do you think you're listened to do you think you've got a result and the answer is no 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 so what can you do about that, apart from complain? Or is that all you can do? I think you've got to involve the MPs. You've got to get your local MP involved. But then uh, you, us in South Cambridgeshire, um, we had a, a, a really intolerable creature called Heidi Allen. Uh, and so... You talk about it like she's some kind of pest species. She should be yeah, on the general she, licenses. She, she was from a pest species, I think. Uh, and uh, so she left the Tory party, joined a, an organisation called Change UK, and then she didn't like them either. And so she's left that and she's 
trying to become a Liberal Democrat. Well, I think there are thousands of people trying to become a Liberal Democrat, but most of them are not Liberal and they're not Democratic. All right, so you, you have got a possible change of MP, but that's going to be a good thing. You might get the person you want, you might get somebody who'll listen to you. Uh, on the other hand, we might not. But yes, uh, we've got to shake the MPs up. Um, but uh, it's not done us. It's not done the countryside much good. It doesn't seem to have stopped the rot, but it's something we've heard already in the game theatre so far today. I mean, we've heard it a couple of times that it is up to all of us to go to MPs' surgeries and say these are the problems of the countryside. Please, can you do something about it? Have you have you seen an example of that actually ever working? Quite honestly, no. Um, I, for example, in Cambridgeshire, we have a village called Water Beach. Uh, Water Beach is in the Fens. And the planners can't understand that Water Beach means that uh, it might be quite wet and it might be a bit of Fenland. Uh, the fact is, Water Beach was owned by the Ministry of Defence and I went round uh, this area the army owned several years ago when it had a camp commander who was heavily into wildlife and he was saying we've got barn owls back, uh, we've got great crested newts, we've got this, we've got that. Um, Water Beach is now going to have 10,000 houses on it because it is military of defence land and they're going to make a lot of money uh, for the government and Water Beach will be some of the brand new houses in 10 years time which you will read uh, have been flooded. Um, we don't learn anything. We don't learn anything. Right, we've got a few minutes where I'm going to let Robin go over there and you can, you can rush over and, and, and purchase your copy of his book, The Decline of the English Village. Robin Page, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. <laughs>